It's called a ripple carry adder because the, the carry ripples through, meaning that you have to wait until this positional sum is completed before you move on to the next one. And then you have to wait until this one goes to the next one. And the problem with it is it's just like the ripple counter. It works really good if you run somewhat slow because you don't, you just go, here's your numbers, and then you go, and the sum comes out. But if you try to go faster and faster and faster, at some point you might change the input so fast that the output hasn't even had a chance to ripple through all the logic. Okay? Now you can see that if you drew this even more professionally, bam. Okay, so now what I've done is I've drawn this to show in the, the, the same flow, you know, inputs on the top, outputs on the bottom, what the gates look like in here. And what we care about is the gate delay, because this is only combinational logic. The delay of the circuit is when you tell the inputs, here are the inputs, how long does it take for the output to reach its final value? Now, the way that this will look, if you actually simulated this with delay, which you're going to do, is you'll actually see the sums start changing right away. Because these gates, are, they're real gates. I mean, they're just producing their outputs. They don't even know they're in a circuit. Okay? Ooh. That's a philosophical question. <laughs> Does a circuit know it's a circuit? All right, forget it. So I come to you and I say, check this out. These all start banging away. We know it's done once the sum is produced and all the outputs are stable. We only get that when we actually get the longest path delay through the circuit, which is C out. OK, now we start thinking about, well, how long does it take for gates to work? Okay, You guys probably remember this from 261. You know, you basically put an input on the inputs and you add up all the delay. So it really is as simple as addition. Okay? Now this one kind of sucks because there's whole lots of stuffs going on in here. But one of the ways that you simplify logic circuits in order to get like a high level view of how fast they are is you just assume that every gate has the same delay. And then what you do is you count the levels of delay. This is kind of like an a algorithmic thing where you say, OK, if I have a circuit that has a level of 9, and I can do a, a change to it and get a number of levels of 8, I have made an improvement to it. Okay? Then you say that architecture is potentially better. Then you pump in all the numbers and do the fine simulation. Okay? So what we do is for a quick and dirty analysis of it is we figure out how many levels of logic. Now what a level of logic is is this. I mean, if, if you come along and you do a sum of products, Okay, you go, okay, is a sum of products two, <laughs> how many levels of logic is this? This is actually a trick question. How many levels of logic is a sum of products? You would think it's two, right? So it's like this is one right here, this is two. But what do you always have in a sum of products? You always also have inverters, okay? So one of these puppies is going to be inverted. You know it's going to be inverted. So, I mean, you have a 50% chance, right? So what happens is that you can, you know immediately that a sum of products, the best case scenario is that it only has three levels of logic, no matter what. What screws you with sum of products is fan in. So as soon as fan in gets considered, if you have a huge, huge sum of product circuit, then fan in will cause the OR gate to start needing to be broken down, and you add another level, add another level. And it follows kind of like this logarithmic flow thing. But anyway, that's just the overview of how you calculate the logic levels of a sum product. So I'm going to come in here and I just want to by inspection try to figure out how many levels there are. So let's look at when the inputs happen. Whenever you do a timing analysis, you assume the inputs all occur, boom, right now. You know why they occur right now? Boom. It's because they all come from the output of a D flip-flop somewhere else in your system. So when I say boom now, that boom now is what? It was the rising edge of a clock. So you go boom now. They all go, all the outputs are produced and they're used as input, and then they stop. Once they stop, where do you think they reside most times? On the input to a D flip-flop. And the reason we care when they stop is because we're now ready to do what? Hit it with another clock cycle. So that delay in between when it got hit and when you can hit it again represents the frequency of the clock. Okay, that's the period. Then all you do is you one over it and you got the frequency. So that means less delay means less time you have to wait before we can hit our digital system with a clock edge, higher frequency. Okay? I look at this, level one's pretty damn easy, okay? Because the inputs all hit 
and it's like, okay, well, they all have to go through a half adder, okay? so we'll call that level one. Okay? What's interesting is that even if you track A, all the inputs here and all the inputs here, okay, you know you got one level that's here, but then what happens is that level two is actually only this guy. And the reason it's only this block right here is because the inputs now from A and B are here, and C0, it was already there, but this can now calculate and produce its outputs. Okay? Why isn't this dude right here considered a level two? It's because one of its inputs isn't there yet. Sure, A and B are there after one level of logic, but C1 hasn't been computed yet. We only compute C1 after another level of logic. So the OR gate in the position 0 full adder is level 3. All right, so that's fine. So let's think about that. Then here comes the C1. It goes over to here. And then this now becomes what level? Level 4, right? And there it is. Right? There's the answer. And then I go, OK, so then it's going to trickle through over here. And this OR gate now is going to be what? level five, boom, and then that's going to trickle over to here, and this half adder is going to be level six, and then this one over here is level seven, and then this over here is level eight, and then this over here is level nine, and so we could add all this up and say we have nine levels of logic. Okay? Wouldn't it be cool though? Here, let me cover the answer. Boom. <laughs> let me ask you this. Can we come up with an equation for this? Probably. Because if we tried to do a 32-bit adder, you don't want to count it. Even though you could, probably still wouldn't take that long. But let's try to come up with an equation. First of all, the first level, the first full adder is going to put how many stages of logic? Levels. Three. There ain't no way around it. It's got three levels. One, two, three. But then how many levels of logic did each subsequent full adder add? It only did two, right? So it, because these guys computed immediately, and they had their outputs ready. So really what you have is you're going to say plus two levels for each other position. So it's not if I had an n bit adder, which n would be equal to 4, it's not going to be multiplied by 4, is it? It's going to be 4 minus 1, because we already accounted for position 0. So what we would do is we'd multiply this by n minus 1. Is that, oh, how's that feel? And then you're like, what's the real answer? <laughs> Boom. All right. How's that feel? That's awesome. I'm going to circle that. Oh, that feels good. That feels good.